So while I was over in Las Vegas at Eastgate Con, I got a WeChat message from the owner of Vesta asking me to review their new electric skateboard. Now I was really surprised at this because I hadn't heard much from Vesta in the last year or so and I just assumed they had sort of gone by the wayside, kind of like Lycon, and were just selling boards they had already made. Well, he then shared a picture and it was a whole new board, it's a carbon board. It looked pretty, looked a little bit similar to other boards out there and I was kind of on the fence whether I was going to review it or not. Then he sent through the spec sheet and I immediately said yes. Let's roll the intro and I'm going to tell you why I said yes on the spot and what specs and what features made me say it. Scotty. You're Scotty. Vesta Osprey. I think I'm saying that right. Osprey, Osprey. And it is a very, very interesting carbon electric skateboard. Now before we get into the specs, let's talk about the unboxing experience. Nothing fancy, nothing that made me go, wow, it's a cardboard box. You lift the foam out, you met with the skateboard, you lift it out under there, you've got a really nice branded uh, carry case. In there you've got everything you'd expect. You've got the charger, you got some tools, some spare bearings. You've got their remote control, which I haven't seen before with another brand. They call it the magazine style because it does look like a, a magazine that you'd put into a, a gun of some type. The charger is a five amp charger, so not the biggest charger currently, but certainly a big step up in size from what we were seeing even just 12 months ago. And underneath the board is a set of 97 mil street wheels, which is one of the options when you purchase. One thing I will say, and I've said this to, to Paul, the owner, if you buy this board, don't worry about getting the street wheels because the battery enclosure, if you go for the large battery, it's actually too low and you'll never be able to use those wheels on this board. move on to the deck and this is the first of two maybe three things that made me go yes I definitely want to review the Vestar Osprey now let's get the obvious out of the way it looks like an Evolve I can't help that but what it does do and I've never seen this before is that it expands so this is an adaptable skate deck it gets thicker if you choose the bigger battery option and if you put the smaller battery option in, guess what? It gets skinnier or narrower. Let me slow down and show you really quickly what I mean because this is a really clever idea. So straight away you'll notice it has the, the bolts like every skateboard. But what it doesn't have is it doesn't have the opening for where the battery goes in. This isn't a top mounted electric skateboard. It's actually underneath on the bottom. And this is where it gets really clever. So let's look at it on the side. Now here we've got the under, underside lighting, which I'll talk about um, a little bit later in the video. But what happens is, is when you tighten those bolts, let me get the camera right, when you tighten those bolts on the top, it pulls this in until there's nowhere else to go. Now this has got the big battery option, which of course we will talk about in length. And that is as narrow as it can go. Now if you go for the smaller battery option, all of that goes inside the deck. So this bit here, let me just see if you can see it. This bit here will actually not be there. It'll be inside. It goes inside and makes the whole board narrower. All right, let's carry on and go underneath the board 
and talk about the trucks. Now they're a combination of two different um, machine or metal types. The base plate is CNC milled and looks really nice. And that also is where they house the charge port and the power button in the rear. Below that are the hangers. Now they are forged. And that really is my first opportunity for this board. It would be great to see some CNC milled hangers as well. I feel like that's probably the direction most brands are going in now. And I think with this board, Vestar is stepping up a level, specifically with, with this model, the Osprey. Having the CNC base plate is a, a move in the right direction, but they need to carry that onto the hangers in my opinion. go back to the deck because I didn't talk too much about that. Now it's a forged carbon fibre deck. It has a nice little bit of concave on the toe and heel. It has a nice gentle drop. A little bit more than a micro but it is definitely there. And it has a really gentle W concave. So if you look right in the middle there, you, can, you might be able to see it, you might not. But there is a very gentle, I want to say maybe three mil, maybe less little W concave right down the centre there. Now, I'm not always the biggest fan, but the way they've done this with the concave on the heel and toe, and then having that little bit of concave just underneath the, the what do you call it, the middle part of your foot, it's really nice. It sort of locks you in and lets you, lets you bounce your feet around and you still have a really nice wide platform. That's another thing, it's a very wide carbon fibre board. I'm a size 11 uh, US, and you can see I've got no issues fitting my feet on there. I think if you're above, say, a 13, you might have a little bit more overhang than you would probably like, but you'd definitely still be able to ride it. I'm going to jump off the board really quickly because I want to talk about the battery options on the Osprey. That's the second point that made me say, yes, I will review this board in a heartbeat. Now it comes in two different battery configurations. The first one is a 13S 4P, and that's made up of really sort of well-regarded, well-known 40T cells. I've got my phone here because I can't remember all these numbers. Uh, you're looking at 16 amp hours or 748 watt hours. So it's a good size for a carbon electric skateboard. But that's not what got my interest. What made me say yes to this board in a heartbeat was the other battery, and that is a 13S 8P, 13S 8P, and that's using the LG M50 LT cells. Uh, now that's 40 amp hours, 4-0, or 1,872 watt hours. All right, let's quickly do an acceleration test. Massive plane over above, you can probably hear. We are in uh, pro mode, so this has four speed modes, low, medium, high, and pro. We're in pro mode, the battery is close to full, uh, it's going to bring it up here onto the line, and we will hit the go. Now this has pretty good punch. Um, uh, you know, if this is running the big battery, so it's 16.6 kilos. So it's got a be decent amount of weight to get moving, but it does get up and boogie. Now let me show you. I'm going to count down. So I'm not going for top speed. We're just going for acceleration here. So three, two, one. Woo! Okay. So I hit 40 straight away. So it gets up to 40 pretty quickly. My thumb did slip a little bit on the wheel there. So if you saw a little bit of like when I said go and there was a, a split second of sort of lag, that was these gloves. I need to get something with a thumbless, thumbless glove so I get better grip. Now to give you an idea of this path, it's two meters wide. So we're getting a really nice carve there, almost a two meter carve under control and we're sitting on about 35 kilometers per hour. Just really quickly while I'm waiting for the light to change, the other thing I didn't talk about was the tires. Now I've actually never seen this, this particular tire tread before. It's 175 millimeter. Seems to be really, really grippy. I haven't tried it in the rain. I probably won't. But it, it's a really nice tire. It matches the board 
beautifully. All right, let's check out the braking. We've got a nice long straight here. We're sitting on 36 kilometers per hour. I can see there is a pole coming up. I'm gonna slam the brakes on as I go past this pole. So about three seconds. One, two, three, brake. Nice hard brake. That's pretty good. I'm, I'm not complaining for a consumer ESC. That is definitely better than most hobby wings. All right, that's 50 kilometers per hour right there. And we are nowhere near full acceleration. And it's very stable. I don't want to go too fast. I don't have my jacket or my elbow pads on. The problem with TKP is you feel too confident on them. And these are no different from any of the TKPs I've ridden. They are just carvy and fun. But when you get up to speed, they just they just stiffen up and you feel so confident. But it just takes one thing to go wrong. So I've got to keep reminding myself, don't go so fast when you don't have all your gear on. Now we will be doing a complete separate range test for this board. And I'm pretty confident it will be a channel record. That 13S, 8P, 19, just under 1900 watt hour battery or 40 uh, amp hours. I'm getting all my numbers stuffed up, I know. 40 amp hours, just under 1900 watt hours. It'll definitely be, or it should definitely be a channel record. My first oversight is, when you're just riding, you turn the board on, the brake light or the tail light turns on, it doesn't react when you brake, unless you have the underglow lights on. So unless you're in, I'm gonna call it the night mode. So if I was to brake right now, the light just stays solid red. I think that's an oversight, and I hope they can fix it, with some simple programming. My second observation is the underglow lights. I love the lights on this, they look fantastic. But there is only one option. They're either on or off. And it cycles through colors when it's stationary. So when you just hop off the board and you leave it there, I'll insert a video, it's just, it cycles through all the colors, which is nice, it looks pretty but I'd love to be able to lock on one color. Like say, right, I just want blue, I just want yellow, I just want green. And I get that's hard to do without an app. Now when you hit the brake, when that's activated, the back light flashes, and all the lights underneath the board flash as well, which I also like. Now when you start riding, they start to flash, which is pretty cool. They sort of cycle in rainbow colors for a couple of seconds, and then they go blue. And I've got no problem with that. I love blue, That's if I was gonna be riding this board at night time, I would select blue. But again, it comes back to personalization. It would be really nice if you could tailor that color. about the remote control. This is what they call their magazine style. As I'm sure you can see, it looks like a magazine you'd put in the bottom of a, some sort of machine gun. It's really comfortable. It's thumb goes on the wheel, forward to go, back to brake. You've got your two buttons there. So you've got your power button, which is up the top. Hold that down for a few seconds, comes up the V logo, turns on. Now on the screen, you can see all the information you need to know. You can see the board battery, the remote battery. You can see what direction the board's going in. You can see what speed mode you're in. Uh, you can see what brake mode you're in. Uh, odometer, all that sort of stuff. So it, it's a very basic, very simple, effective remote control. One additional, and I said it when I was out riding before, it has the lighting control. So if you hold down this D button, I think it is, no, S button. If you hold down the S button for a couple of seconds, your lighting turns on. As soon as you accelerate, I'll see if I can lift this up and show you. And then after a while, it'll settle and go blue. So that's blue now. Looks a bit white on the video, I'm sure, but in person, 
It's like a really nice electric blue. take the last couple of minutes just to summarize the Vesta Osprey. Do I like it? Yes, I do. I really do like it because of those different features that we spoke about. That expandable deck is such a smart idea. The fact that you can have two different battery types in there and not have a whole lot of empty space. Put the smaller battery in, tighten the screws, everything gets narrower. Really, really clever. I really like the underglow lights. They are effective. I wish they were customizable. They aren't yet. Maybe one day. I like the ESC they're using. I like the fact that it's really basic. It's Fock, it's Lingy, it's smooth, it's reliable, it's dependable. I really like the tires they're using. I haven't seen these tires before. You may have, I haven't. And I like the fact they are using TKP trucks. One opportunity, make the hangers uh, CNC milled as well. The base plate is already. So CNC in those hangers, it, gives, it will give the riders more confidence uh, and it just adds, adds a premium, premiumness, premiumness to their product. Now something else I didn't talk about while we're riding, and that is the location of the power button and the charge port. And you'll notice it's in this nice, really nice machined out recess area. Now the problem with that, if you do get caught in any rain, if there's any moisture, that'll almost act like a sink, like a bath, and it will hold water. And guess where that water's gonna go? Path of least resistance, which is straight into that charge port or into that power button circuitry. So. If I was riding this and there was any chance of rain, I would be slapping some duct tape or just something over it to keep the moisture out of there. But honestly, that is it. There is a lot to love about this board and everything I've mentioned as an opportunity or an improvement is very, very minimal. I'm really excited to see what comes next. I can give you a little tip in their instruction booklet. It has carbon osprey, bamboo osprey. As always, discount codes, links, everything will be down below. Uh, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for watching all of my eSkate Con videos. Really, really appreciate all the views, comments, and likes. I love the fact that every single one of those I know is legitimate and authentic, and it means so much that you guys enjoy this content. If you've got any comments or questions, chuck them down below. If I, if I got a spec wrong, tell me. I'm only human. I do my best to sort of memorize it and write and talk and film. Every now and then I will let one slip past the keeper, so keep me accountable tell me when I get things wrong. And that's it. So thank you so much for watching. As always, skate safe, wear a helmet, and we'll see you on the next video. Who's Scotty? Who's Scotty? I know this doesn't count, but while I was riding back to the car, there was a nice big long straight and I opened it up and according to the remote, I hit 61. That's fast. I know it doesn't count, we'll film an independent speed and range test when I'm all padded up, but as of right now with a headwind, up 20 kilometers riding, still showing a full battery and 61 on the remote control.